Hello Nerds, today's topic is about structure of protein. We have already studied about the functions of protein, also the structure of amino acid which are going to combine together to form the protein. I will share the video link in the description as well as in the i button, you can check that out. So today we are just going to study about the different levels of organization of proteins. There are four levels of protein structure, primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. First of all, talking about the primary structure, it comprises of number of amino acids and the sequence of amino acids which are present in the protein molecules. For example, here you can see there are amino acids which are combined together with each other. So if you are going to study about the primary structure of the protein, you should know that which amino acids are present and in which sequence they are present. For example, I say here the glycine is present, here the alanine is present, here the tryptophan is present. So this is actually the sequence of amino acid and this is actually the primary sequence of or the primary structure of protein. The arrangement of amino acid is very specific for its proper functioning. It means that the primary sequence of one protein is going to be different from the primary sequence of another protein. And this is because every protein is specific for its function. So as the sequence changes, the function of the protein also changes. If we take the example of sickle cell anemia, in this disease, the shape of the red blood cells is changed to sickle because of this reason the red blood cells they are unable to carry the oxygen now actually what is happening that one out of 574 amino acids which are present in the hemoglobin only one amino acid is replaced and because of this replacement the oxygen carrying ability of the hemoglobin is altered here you can see this is the sequence of amino acid or the primary structure of amino acid which is present in the hemoglobin and we can see that normal red blood cells they are produced but what happened in the sickle cell anemia that only one amino acid which is in this case is glutamic acid is replaced with the valine and because of this replacement the shape of the red blood cell is changed so the primary structure of the amino acid is very important for its proper functioning the first amino acid sequence was discovered by the f sanger and he discovered the sequence of insulin he stated that insulin is made up of two chains and in the two chains 51 amino acids are arranged in such a way that one chain is going to have 21 amino acid while the other chain will have 30 amino acid here you can see the structure of human insulin this purple is one chain and this blue one is another chain and these two chains they are attached with each other you can see that every single amino acid is represented by a bead so we can say that this is the primary structure of the protein insulin the other example is hemoglobin the hemoglobin which i told you that is going to carry the oxygen hemoglobin is made up of four chains two alpha chain and two beta chains here you can see the structure of hemoglobin there are four chains one two three and four chains two alpha chains these one and these two are beta chain and this is the proper structure of hemoglobin and because of this structure it is going to carry the oxygen so this is also the primary structure of the protein the size of the protein depends on the types of amino acids which are present and the number of amino acids which are present so, so the more the number of amino acids the more the size of the protein second is the secondary structure of the protein the secondary structure is formed when the polypeptide chain it coils into helix or other regular configuration talking about the polypeptide polypeptide means a protein chain or a primary structure of amino acids in which the amino acids they are joined together so if this primary structure is going to coil into helix or some other regulation then it is going to form the secondary structure the two uh, secondary structures which are very important in the protein the one is alpha helix the other one is beta pleated sheet the alpha helix is formed because of the spiral formation of a basic amino acid here you can see this is the alpha helix and you can see that it is spirally arranged 
you can take the example of phone cord in which you can see that it is coiled or spirally arranged similarly the primary structure of amino acids is going to coil on itself and then going to form this kind of spiral structure there are 3.6 amino acids in each turn so if we talk about one term there will be 3.6 amino acids present and to stabilize this formation hydrogen bonding is going to perform function you can see here the hydrogen bonding is keeping the structure stable the second structure structure is beta pleated sheet which is the folding back of polypeptide here you can see this is primary structure this is the secondary structure they are going to fold on each other and then going to form the beta pleated sheet it is similar to that if you are making a fan of a paper you can see the folds here similarly when you fold the paper on itself you are going to have the this kind of formation similar thing happens in the beta pleated sheet when the amino acid chains they are folding back on each other third level of protein structure is tertiary structure the tertiary structure is formed when the polypeptide chain they bend and fold upon itself and form a globular structure for example you have this alpha helix or you have this protein cord and then what happened that this protein cord is going to form or fold on itself and then it's going to form a globular structure so this globular structure which is formed is known as tertiary structure this tertiary structure is very important because it is going to help in the stabilization of the protein structure here you can see this is the tertiary structure or when you take the example of um, phone cord then this is a globular structure which is formed now this structure is maintained by three types of bondings the one is ionic bond the second is hydrogen bond and the third one is disulfide bond the disulfide bond is formed between sulfur and sulfur here you can see this is the hydrogen bonding this is the ionic bonding and here you can see the disulfide bond so these three types of bonding are going to help in the stabilization of tertiary structure in the equosine environment this is the most stable configuration and why this is most stable because in this configuration the hydrophobic amino acids they are going to buried inside the hydrophobic mean that they are afraid of water so they are going to be buried inside while the hydrophilic amino acids they will be present on the surface the hydrophilic amino acids means that they are not afraid of the water so they can be present on the surface of the protein structure the last level of protein structure is the quaternary and this is the most complex structure what happened that in this structure the protein tertiary chains they are going to aggregate with each other and they are going to be held together by hydrophobic interactions by hydrogen bonding and by ionic bonding the famous example or the most suitable example for the quaternary structure is the hemoglobin if you remember the hemoglobin is made up of four chains two alpha and two beta chains so when these four chains they are going to aggregate or cluster together we are going to have the complex structure which is known as quaternary structure Here you can see this is one tertiary structure this is second tertiary structure third and this fourth tertiary structure so these four tertiary structures they are going to aggregate or cluster with each other and then we are going to have a quaternary structure so this is an example of hemoglobin in which two alpha chains and two beta chains they are joined together so that was all about the structure of proteins if you have any question you can ask me in the comment section i'll see you in the next video